hello so in the last session we discussed about uh, degrees of freedom the we have discussed basically two things those were single degree of freedom and multiple degree of freedom how do we calculate single degree of freedom and how will we distinguish between them we have seen that and also we have seen a generalized equation of motion that will be using in most of the derivation cases so we will be starting with our first derivation in this of this module in this session itself it will be free undamped motion so as we discussed we will be talking about four major things that will be free undamped motion or you can say free undamped vibration free damped vibration forced undamped vibration and forced damped vibration so out of that we will be starting with our first case that is free undamped vibration but before that we will be looking at a, a third derivation that will be energy method calculations now this is not given in your uh, books or you can say it is not in your syllabus to derive or to find energy method but it will be very helpful for solving other uh, derivations because in that we will be using a term of natural frequency now how that natural frequency actually derived can be seen from this equation that is from the energy method so first of all we will be seeing this that is energy method then we will be moving to our main derivation part here so energy method so basically it says that in inertial energy plus potential energy plus dambic energy is always constant this is the basic equation that we will be using for energy method cases clear inertial energy that is energy due to the inertia forces potential energy that is energy due to potential forces and damping energy that is energy due to the and damping forces will always be constant the sum of all this will be constant so bifurcating it inertial energy will be half mx square clear half mx dot square potential energy will be kx square now how this values can we will be seeing further on now this as we all know that half mv square is the kinetic energy so this is basically the equation for kinetic energy that is half mv square v is nothing but velocity and here in this model we will be always substituting x dot as velocity and x double dot to be our acceleration yeah? and potential energy potential energy is always the uh, potential stored in or the potential energy stored in springs Okay. so we will be taking our potential energy stored in springs that is spring constant will be k and the displacement will be x so potential energy will be half into kx square and damping energy damping energy we are neglecting in this case now as the summation is constant we can say that the derivative of it will always be equal to 0 clear so the d by dt of half mx dot square plus half kx square will always be equal to 0 now differentiating it it comes out that half mx into 2x double dot plus half into kx into 2 into kx dot differentiating this equation it the answer comes out to be this so from this we can say that 2 and 2 will be get cancelled 2 and 2 will be get cancelled so x dot is a common between both these cases here also we can see that the uh, x dot is present here also we can say that x dot is present so we can take x dot as to be common between these two uh, summations and then we can move it to the right hand side portion so it will be it will becoming zero so the equation here comes out to be mx double dot plus kx equal to zero this is the equation that it's coming out so mx double dot plus kx equal to zero now in the school portion you have studied this case that is simple harmonic motion so uh, this is the displacement equation for simple harmonic motion it is not to be proved in your syllabus this just you need to remember this that this equation is for simple harmonic motion or to find displacement in simple harmonic motion so x will be equal to a sin omega t and x double dot will be our acceleration will that will be double derivative of this so double derivative of this comes out to be minus a omega square sin omega t clear so x equal to a sin omega t is obtained from our shm that is simple harmonic motion and double differentiating it we get minus a omega square sin omega t first differentiation gives us minus cos and then again it gives us sin clear so 
solving it substituting x and x dot double dot in this case we get m into substituting this x double dot value here and uh, we and substituting x dot value here we get here that a sin omega t is constant in both this cases we can say that a sin omega t is present so we can again move it to right hand side portion so the remaining part is m into minus omega square plus k this is the remaining portion clear so the m minus omega square plus k equal to 0 now here if we make omega as our subject so omega square here will be equal to k by m omega square will be equal to k by m and uh, taking the square on both sides we get omega equal to under root k by m this is nothing but natural frequency in our module in your books it is just mentioned that k equal to k uh, omega equal to under root k by m but how this actual the, this equation derives it is not given in your syllabus portion clear so this is the equation that you will be dealing with most of the numerical problem itself too ask you to find the, the natural frequency of the body clear so the omega will be equal to k under root k by m this is the natural frequency now moving on to the main derivation portion the question here can be derive the equation for single degree of free undamped vibration system this is our first type of derivation the first case is that the force is free in nature and the damping condition is given as undamped nature clear now we have already seen what is free for and what is free vibration and what is force vibration if when a vibration starts by applying a force initially and then releasing that amount of force that amount of force will not be coming into picture in the remaining portion then it is termed as free vibration but when a body to vibrate requires sufficient amount of uh, force to be applied at a constant rate throughout its mm, duration then it is called a forced vibration clear now we are talking about free vibration so let us take an example that what we are looking upon so this is a mass spring mass model as you can see here the, this is the rigid surface it is connected to a mass via spring so the spring constant will be k will be taking that the mass of the object will be taking to be m and the displacement will be taking it to be x as you can see here that the displacement will always be in the vertical direction and there is a displacement only in one direction so it is to be termed as a single degree of freedom clear as the displacement is only in, in the one direction it will be termed as single degree of freedom now considering the free body diagram of this case it comes out to be that force is applied in top direction that is in upward direction f of t is the force that has been applied clear now the spring spring constant and the inertia will always be acting in the opposite direction to the force keep, it, keep that in mind so the force is applied in the upward direction so the inertia force will be applied in downward direction also the spring force will be applied in the downward direction spring force will always be equal to k into x and inertia force will always be equal to mx double dot or you can say mass into acceleration clear now as we are dealing with free vibration so there is no amount of force to be required so f of t will be considered to be zero clear so this is our free body diagram that we have studied upon now as we have seen earlier too in the last session that the general equation for sd of system is mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx equal to f of t now for our first derivation part our case is free undamped vibration system so since this is a free vibration system f of t will be considered to be zero and since it is an undamped system that means there is no damping force acting or no dampers provided in it then c will be considering it to be zero so if c is to be zero then ch dot will be taking to be zero so our equation here comes out to be mx double dot plus kx equal to zero clear this will be our generalized equation that we will be using for our first derivation it will be this cx term will be 0 and this f of t will be 0 so we will be just using mx double dot plus kx equal to 0 so from free body diagram as we can see here mx double dot plus kx equal to 0 we will be using that 
so now the solution of this motion is given by x equal to c1 cos omega t plus c2 sin omega t now how this value came if you take the roots of it uh, if you take the root of it it will be in complex nature so solving that we can get the value x equal to c1 cos omega t plus c2 sin omega t but it is not been asked in your examination to find the roots of it so directly if you write this solution it will be well and good in your examination too so x will be equal to c1 cos omega t plus c2 sin omega t this is the solution that is our displacement that we are getting but it is in terms of c1 and c2 that means c1 and c2 here are the constants and omega is our natural angular frequency the natural angular frequency which will be in radian per second cos omega t and sin omega t are the periodic functions so this is not the final value that we are looking upon because we can't express our derivation to be in the form of some constant value we should be having our final derivative answer to be a prefix value so we can't assume it to be a constant value so we need to remove the constants now how will be removing this constants will be seeing that so as such the motion is periodic and it repeats after a certain interval of time omega t will be equal to 2 pi now what does it mean the motion here is periodic that means the cycle remains same throughout its motion we have seen it in previous sessions too that there are two types of motion one is periodic and other is non periodic if the cycle remains constant of the wave throughout then it is termed as periodic motion and for that how can we identify that it is a periodic motion or not for that this is the value of crest and this is the value of trough so if the interval between two consecutive uh, crest that means this distance and this distance if are, it is the same then it is known as a periodic interval clear yeah? so this will be our t that is a time period time period to move or to gain a consecutive crest or a consecutive trough that is known as a time period so time period will be 2 pi because as we all know that one cycle will always be equal to 2 pi half cycle will be equal to pi quarter will be pi by 4 and three quarters will be 3 pi by 4 as per our geometry systems so if we consider a full cycle then the value will be 2 pi now solving it if we take t equal to our subject then t will be equal to 2 pi by omega clear so 2 pi omega we have already Uh, derived in this session itself we will be using that because omega is equal to under root k by m this is the de derivation that we have seen earlier it is directly using this equation so t that is a time period it is also been asked in your examination to find the time period of a particular uh, distance problem or you can say the numerical part so for time period the equation here will be 2 pi under root m by k clear so, this will be the equation or you can say 2 pi by omega whichever the value or data is given in the question you can use that so this is the equation for time period t is called the period of undamped free vibration the number of times that the motion repeats itself in one second is called natural frequency of vibration clear so this natural frequency or to find the natural frequency is been asked repeatedly in your examination so for that the number of times that the motion repeats itself in one second is called the natural frequency of vibration which you will be terming as f small f so small f will be equal to 1 by t we already know the value of t so the reciprocal of this will uh, give us the value of our natural frequency so f equal to 1 by t which will be omega upon 2 pi and this make taking the inverse of this will give us the answer of our frequency of vibration or you can say natural frequency of vibration clear so this is our portion which is asked in your examination too frequently now we'll be moving on to our main case our main generalized equation was x equal to c1 cos omega t plus c2 sin omega t but again we can't prove our final derivative answer to be in the terms of constants so now we'll be removing this constants now how will be removing this constants this the constant c1 and c2 can be determined from the initial conditions of motion or you can say by applying boundary conditions so we have that x equal to c1 cos omega t plus c2 sin omega t so the derivative of that will give us x dot will be 
which will be our velocity so taking derivative of this cos comes out to be minus sign so minus c1 sin omega t omega comes out to be into omega clear this will be our derivative portion of our first part the derivative of sin will be cos so c2 cos omega t into omega this will be the value of our x dot so we will be taking these two cases that is x will which was our answer that we have proved earlier and this will be the derivative taking is that equation number a and equation number b applying boundary condition so for first case taking time equal to 0 so this x that is our displacement comes out to be initial displacement so considering initial displacement to be x0 clear this was our final displacement but when t equal to t the final displacement can be calculated but when the starting portion or the initial portion if we take t equal to 0 then the displacement can be can be termed as initial displacement and this initial displacement we have substituted it to be x0 clear so now substituting this in the equation number a we get that x comes out to be x0 so x0 equal to cos omega into t clear now we can say that cos omega into t comes out to be 1 so c1 into 1 and sin omega into t t equal to 0 clear so as you can see here if we apply t equal to 0 it comes out to be cos 0 cos 0 is 1 and sin 0 is 0 so the value comes out to be x0 equal to c1 so this is our first case that we can substitute x c1 equal to x0 now to find the second our boundary condition that is we will be taking this equation so this equation is for velocity so now we will be applying boundary condition when t equal to 0 our velocity velocity will comes out to be initial velocity clear we are assuming at t equal to 0 our velocity will be initial velocity that will be x dot 0 so again you during the same thing in this equation number b substituting t equal to 0 and x dot equal to x 0 dot we get x dot 0 equal to now sin 0 will be 0 and this will be c2 into omega clear so now making c2 as our subject our answer comes out to be x0 dot upon omega so these are the values of constant c1 and c2 that we obtained now again we will be substituting these values that is we will be substituting the values of c1 and c2 in our equation number 2 here then we will be getting an answer substituting the values of c1 and c2 in equation a we can see here the answer comes out to be x equal to x0 cos omega t plus x0 dot by omega sin omega t this is the final value of displacement that we have proved in our first derivation it is being asked in the numerical portion also that find the value of displacement so if the it is asked find displacement then we will be using this equation for free undamped condition clear this is only used when free undamped condition condition is given so for free undamped condition our answer will be x equal to x0 cos omega t plus x0 dot upon omega sin omega t where x0 is our initial displacement omega is our angular frequency t is our time period x0 dot is our initial velocity again omega will be our angular frequency and t will be our time period clear now simultaneously it is all it is also been asked to find amplitude of the uh, amplitude of the body so amplitude the equation here is a equal to under root c1 square plus c2 square clear we have already obtained the value of c1 and c2 so just substituting it we are getting the value of our amplitude so amplitude here will be under root x0 square plus x0 dot upon omega whole square clear this is the whole square portion so this was our first derivation so in the next session we will be seeing numericals pertaining to this and also we will be seeing a major theory related to this first derivation clear thank you